In the previous video, we got to know how KYC came into place. Let us now look into what the KYC norms which have to be fulfilled. We will take up specific KYC norms for each type of customer later. For now, we will focus on general KYC norms for all types of transactions. Like I mentioned earlier, RBI is the central bank of India that monitors the entire banking system. It is also the bank that has issued the KYC guidelines. As specified by the RBI, every RBI regulated entity now needs to have a KYC policy in place. The policy requires incorporating four key elements. Let us list them and then go into the details of each of them. They are as follows. 1. Every bank must have a customer acceptance policy. 2. They must set in place customer identification procedures. 3. They must monitor customer transactions regularly. This is to be able to identify and report on suspicious transactions. The fourth requirement is that banks must define and manage the risk posed by each of the customers. That is, they must have a risk management policy in place. The first requirement, customer acceptance policy, defines the criteria for accepting customers. The banks must accept customers strictly in accordance with this policy. Generally, the customer acceptance policy states that no account shall be opened in anonymous or benami name. Further, it says that no account shall be opened or closed where the bank is unable to verify the identity of the customer. It also states that no account should be opened where the customer is a person with a criminal background or is a member of a banned terror organization, etc. Customer identification procedures is the second key element which is incorporated in the KYC policy. It defines the procedures to be followed to establish the identity of the customers. Some persons will be natural persons, that is persons who exist in flesh and blood like you and me. For customers like us, banks obtain sufficient identification data to verify the identity of the customer by requesting for the address and a recent photograph. Some bank account customers may be legal persons, like a joint stock company. For these customers, the bank should also verify their legal status. It should verify that the entity in fact exists. Also, that any person who is acting on behalf of the legal person is authorized to do so. They should also determine whether they are natural persons who ultimately control the legal persons. Monitoring of transactions is the third key element of framing the KYC policy. Banks, by doing so, can effectively help contain illegal activity. Whenever they spot something unusual, they should report that transaction. However, to do this, they need to know the normal and reasonable transaction activity for all its customers. This understanding helps to identify the transactions that fall outside the regular pattern of an account. In accordance with KYC guidelines, banks should also label their customers as low risk, medium risk and high risk. They should then subject high risk and medium risk account holders to intensive monitoring. We will discuss these categories in our next video on evaluating risk. The banks also need to pay a special attention to all complex, unusual transactions that have no apparent economic or visible lawful purpose. For effective monitoring, banks should prescribe threshold limits for a particular category of accounts. And lastly, they should comply with regulations prescribed by the RBI in this regard from time to time. Apart from extensively monitoring customers belonging to medium and high risk groups, there are certain other transactions that your banks should be monitoring. For example, any large or complex transactions, including any RTGS transactions, need to be monitored. Any transaction which follows an unusual pattern or which is inconsistent with the normal expected activity of a particular account should be flagged. These transactions generally have no economic rationale and appear to be of no legitimate purpose. Banks also need to monitor transactions which exceed the limit on the kind and number of transactions set by the bank for a particular account. 
Also, transactions in new accounts need to be monitored with third-party checks. Pay orders and draft deposits is followed by withdrawal of large sums of money. Transactions, if monitored closely, can help to identify money laundering activities in such accounts. For example, there may be cases where a large number of checks books are sought by a company, or small deposits may be made from across the country into one bank account, generally in cash. Or there may be cases where a large number of checks may be issued bearing similar accounts or dates. All these suspicious transactions should be monitored and reported regularly. In furtherance of the KYC policy and to tackle the menace of black money, the government has made a new rule. From 1st of January 2016, all cash transactions exceeding rupees 50,000 must be accompanied with a PAN card. Therefore, if a customer wants to deposit rupees 50,000 or more in the account of a friend, then you should request for his PAN card. You should also request the PAN card for any transactions such as hotel or foreign travel bills that exceed 50,000 rupees. This should be done for term deposits exceeding rupees 50,000 at one time or deposits of rupees 5 lakhs in a year. A PAN card is mandatory for transactions carried out using a debit or a credit card which exceed rupees 2 lakhs, including transactions for purchasing jewellery. Purchase of immovable properties costing more than Rs 10 lakh also require a PAN card. Immovable property is property that cannot be moved without destroying or altering it. It is a property that is fixed to the earth, such as land or a house. Payments of more than Rs 50,000 for cash cards or prepaid instruments as well as for acquiring shares of unlisted companies of Rs 1 lakh and above require a copy of PAN card to be submitted. When a customer approaches you to make a cash deposit of more than Rs 50,000, you need to request the customer to submit a copy of the PAN card. In all other cases where a bank-to-bank -bank transfer is involved, no PAN card is required. In such cases, the bank already has access to the PAN card details of its customer. The customer would have to submit a copy of the PAN card while opening a bank account as per the KYC norms. Risk management is the fourth element that is to be considered while framing the KYC policy. It ensures that banks set in place procedures and practices that effectively manage and mitigate risk associated with banking transactions. Banks should devise measures for creating risk profiles of their existing and new customers. Such measures should aid in assessing risk while dealing with various countries, geographical areas, products, services, transactions, and delivery channels. Also, these procedures and practices should be able to monitor that the policies framed for risk management are being implemented. We are going to discuss more on risk management in our next video, Evaluating Risks.